Hey guys, welcome to the C++ game development series where we will create a simple 2D snake game using C++ and a simple library called SFML. In this video, I'll show you how to set up your development environment so that you can build and run SFML applications. Since this video is specifically made for people using Windows, I'll use Visual Studio and MSVC compiler. You can download Visual Studio Community Edition for free from Microsoft's official website. Link for the same is in the description. But I'll also make it clear that you can use any other ID and compiler that you like because the download size of Visual Studio will be quite big. Assuming that you have a working ID and compiler, I'll show you how to set up SFML. So first thing that you want to do is head over to the official website of SFML which is sfml-dev.org. As the title on this page says, it is a really simple and fast multimedia library. It is divided into 5 modules, system, window, graphics, audio and network. From their names, you can pretty much guess what they do. So let's go into the download section and then SFML 2.5.1. This is the latest stable version when I was recording this. Here you'll find two versions of this library for multiple compilers. Since I'll be using Visual Studio, I'll pick the latest one for it. Next thing is to select 32 or 64 bit. So this is where many people make mistakes. The selection depends on the architecture for which you are building your application. Keep in mind that you can build a 32 bit application using a 64 bit machine. And in that case, you will have to select the 32 bit version. As I'll build this game for 64 bit, I'll download the 64 bit version. After the download completes, just extract the zip to any location. I have extracted it to C drive. In the extracted folder, you will find the DLLs, documentation, the header files and the libraries to which we will have to link. You will find that there are 4 versions of each module. So the ones with hyphen D are debug libraries and the ones with hyphen S are static libraries and the ones with hyphen S hyphen D both are debug static libraries. So the next thing that you need to do is add the part to this extracted folder in your environment variables. For this, go to start and search for environment variables. You need to select the one which says edit the system environment variable. This will take you to the system properties and under advanced tab click on the button at the bottom which says environment variable. This will open up the environment variables window. You can see that I have already added a variable called sfml underscore path and the value for which is the part to the extracted sfml location. You can add, edit or delete any variable using the buttons provided here. Once the variable is set, we can proceed to Visual Studio. Here, I'll create a new empty project and I'll name this as SFML underscore snake. After the project gets created successfully, the first thing that you should do is create a new source file. This step is important because this opens up some C++ specific properties under the project properties. I'll keep this file empty for now and I'll go to the project properties. Here, you can change multiple project properties depending on the platform and configuration. Some of the changes that I'll make are common for both debug and release version. So I'll set the configuration to all configurations. Next, we have to tell Visual Studio where the include files are located for SFML. For this, select the C slash C++ node under configuration properties on the left side panel and on the right panel you'll see additional include directories. Here specify the path to the include folder of SFML. But we don't have to type the absolute path here. Instead, we can use the environment variable that we just added. Just type in $SFML underscore path slash include. This will automatically get expanded to C slash SFML slash include. Next, expand this node and go to preprocessor. And in front of preprocessor definitions, type in SFML underscore static. This is required only if you are linking to SFML library statically. This step is even specified in the tutorial section on SFML's website. If you want, you can read it about there. Next, we will set the linker options. Under linker general, we have to provide the path to additional library directories. This will be sfml underscore path slash lib. After this, we have to specify the actual modules from sfml that we will be using. And this will be specified under linker input additional dependencies. For our game, we only need three modules, graphic, window and system. Now, as there are different libraries for release and debug version, same options will not work for both configurations. So let's first set the ones for debug. It will ask you if you want to save the current changes. So let's click yes. And now copy and paste the module names from the tutorial page. Note that we are using the libraries with hyphen s. And since this is the debug configuration, we will also need to add the hyphen d flag for each of these modules. After adding graphic, window and system module, we will have to add their dependencies too. This information is available on the tutorial page. So for graphics, we only need to add OpenGL32.lib and FreeType.lib. Other two are already added. 
For window, we need to add winmm.lib and gdi32.lib. And for system, we don't need to add anything as winmm is already added. Similarly, I'll quickly add the same module for release configuration too, but without the hyphen D flag. I'll apply these changes and now we just have to test if everything works. For this, let's copy the sample program from the tutorial page in our source.cpp file. Visual Studio is complaining about some of the SFML classes. This is because right now the build platform is set to x86 and we have made changes to project properties only for x64. So let's quickly switch to x64 and now all the errors are gone. We can go ahead and build this program and it succeeds. Now press F5 to run it and there you go. The sample app is running with a big green circle within it. So that was it for initial setup. I hope you were able to follow along. In the next video, we'll start coding up the basic framework required for our snake game. So hope to see you in the next video.